to this now. University of Pretoria researchers have discovered an optimum way to monitor blood oxygen levels in immobilized rhinos. The discovery is part of efforts to combat rhino poaching. The study shows that pulse oximeters originally designed for humans can be used more effectively to monitor the blood oxygen levels of rhinos who are under anesthesia and immobilized by attaching them at an unusual site. The rhino's third eyelid, Dr. Tembe Gam Tetwa, an early career comparative uh, so physiolo physiologist at the University of Pretoria, uh, joins us now to unpack this further. Thank you so much, Doctor, for your time. I mean, this all sounds fascinating and innovative. Just uh, unpack how the solution to then monitor blood oxygen levels in immobilized rhinos was discovered and the benefits of it. Okay, so I think uh, let me start with the what the huge problem was when it comes to immobilizing white rhino. So we found that uh, because we need to make sure that we save these animals, translocate them uh, to 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 low poaching zones, and uh, also dehorn them, we have to make sure that we immobilize them using drugs. But these drugs they affect the breathing of the animal, and and when they affect the breathing of the animal, it can cause low oxygen in the blood. So if there's low oxygen in the blood, there's less oxygen going into the tissues and that can cause tissue death. So we have to make sure that we are monitoring uh, blood oxygenation consistently during the immobilization to help cells save the rhino. So the project came about because uh, the wildlife vets always made sure that they want to monitor oxygen, but they didn't know whether the, the results that they were getting when they were uh, monitoring were correct. So what we wanted to see is whether we can use non-invasive ways of monitoring blood oxygenation. And when we decided then we can let's let's try the pulse oximeter because it's normally used for humans and if humans can place it on the tip of the finger and it's non-invasive, so it causes less stress on the animal. So what we did is we took that uh, probe, we placed it at different attachment sites, and we found that the third island was actually the best site to monitor blood oxygenation. I'm, I'm very curious where exactly this uh, third eyelid is, but just medically, how complicated a procedure is this and the level of precision then, you know, one would need given that this involves the rhino's third eyelid? Okay, so the third eyelid uh, pretty much is just the pink structure at the corner of the eye. And in humans, you cannot see it as well. But in rhino, we, we found that the rhino has the, a, a membrane that is very visible, so it's easier to put the probe in. So because it's a non-invasive way, the probe can easily just tuck into uh, the space between the third eyelid and the eye. So it's not a, 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 a very a hard procedure. It takes about 30 seconds to just make sure you put the probe, as long as it is uh, it's facing the, the membrane where there's a lot of blood vessels, and then you can monitor the blood oxygenation. So it's a very simple uh, way of monitoring blood oxygenation compared to what we use, usually do. We had to normally take arterial samples and uh, those arterial samples, this death procedure is quite invasive. Then take the, the, those uh, blood samples and take them to the lab and then wait a few minutes for uh, a reading. This time you can just put the probe into the third eyelid and uh, it doesn't cause any harm or any pain to the animal. And then you can monitor it consistently uh, throughout the immobilization. And I mean, how successful, have you seen any successes thus far in as far as this procedure is concerned? I mean, just talk to us about what happens on the front line as you protect these rhinos. So, uh, so I've seen uh, now that I've, 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 we've dif discovered this, I've seen that a lot of wildlife vets are taking the approach because normally before, we were, they were placing it on the ear and the rhino has a thick ear. So you have to scrape, scrape the ear to expose the blood vessels. And that you have to make sure that there's a, a bit of build, uh, bleeding on the ear so that then you can attach the probe. But we saw when, uh, uh, when we were looking at our results, we saw that uh, these venues were unreliable. So ever since we have, we have discovered this, because this is a new study, I, I completed my PhD on this study and published a paper uh, two years ago, and also uh, currently uh, we published another paper. So now I've, I've also seen that people 
people who are trying to save rhino, they are dehorning the rhino. Also, the, the my colleagues at the University of Victoria Veterinary Science, when they go in the field to monitor rhino and also do these research projects and also dehorn the rhino, they make sure they put it on the third island. So it's, it's very important. And now they are sure that... Uh, when we are monitoring blood oxygenation, we're getting the correct value so that you can make uh, good decisions, such, such, such as when to give the animal oxygen or to give the animal uh, uh, drugs that can help uh, improve the breathing. So with this um, uh, procedure, we are now able to, uh, to save the rhino before uh, oxygen gets to dangerously low levels and can actually kill the rhino. So, yeah. Oh, fascinating stuff. I would imagine the same would apply to, say, elephants, because we did a story yesterday about, you know, concerns also in as far as elephants are concerned. We, 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 we I think we can look at, we, we can look into, into, into the elephants as well. But I've never worked, like I've worked with elephants uh, just once, but I could see it was easier to put the probe. Now the problem, the problem there is, you can put the probe there and you can get readings, but I, how sure are you that the readings are, are correct? Because the different species have different blood characteristics. So the human, for example, humans have, uh, their blood characteristics are different from those of rhino. That's why we wanted to see whether the values that we are getting, are they actually correct? And the pulse oximeters were, normally, were originally designed for humans. So the human blood is different from other species. And we've seen that in rhino, we have a different blood uh, characteristics and a unique blood. Uh, so therefore, we would have to validate. So in, in elephants as well, I think we can put the probe there, but we also have to validate and make sure that these values are accurate. Wow, fascinating stuff. Thank you so much uh, for your time. And of course, congratulations to you and your team. Dr. Tembeka Tetwa is, of course, with the Uni University of Pretoria's uh, Faculty of Veterinary Science.